Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session we have started the uh, process state uh, transition diagram. So there we have seen different uh, states involved in the process execution, right? So from the creation of the process and till the termination of the process. So we have mainly seen the new state when the process is created that will be in the new state and then ready, ready state, so ready to execute and the running state during the execution and termination after completion of the executing the process. And meanwhile, if, if the process is in running state and if, we, if the process requires some IGO operations to be performed, then the process will be again moved to the uh, waiting state. So after completion of these IGO operations by the IGO devices, then again this process will be moved back to the ready state and from that ready state, the process again moves to the running state. So, and after the process transition diagram, we have also seen the different uh, types of schedulers. So, long term scheduler, short term scheduler and a mid term scheduler. So, the main goal of this short term scheduler is moving these processes from the ready state to running state. So, at a time, number of processes can be ready for execution. So, all those processes process will be in ready state. And based upon the scheduling algorithm, that means a long, the short term scheduler or a dispatcher, so we have to pick up one, uh, one process among the several and that process will be allocated to the CPU for its execution. So that is the short term scheduler. So first in this session, let us see the scheduling criteria and then we will go for different algorithms. So for this uh, scheduling these processes to CPU, that means allocating these processes to CPU, there are different scheduling algorithms. So based upon the criteria, we have to select one, one among different algorithms, right? So in this session, let us see the scheduling criteria and then we will move on to the algorithms, scheduling algorithms. So scheduling criteria, the first criteria is CPU utilization. So the name itself indicates CPU utilization. CPU is a processor, right? So every process will be executed by this CPU. So we have to allocate this CPU to each process to get execution. So CPU utilization means how long the, the CPU is, going to be, is being busy. So CPU is busy means some processor running by the CPU, right? So how long CPU is busy. So busy means some process is going on execution. The second criteria is throughput. Throughput. So as I said that number of process will be in ready state and at a time each process will be given to the CPU. So this throughput means the number of processes executed in unit time in some in particular time period the number of processes being executed by the cpu that is called a throughput next turn around time turn around time so this turn around time means, so how much time the process takes to complete its execution, right? So the completion of time minus the start time. So the difference of beginning of the process and ending of the process. So how much time it takes for execution. Time taken for execution that means difference of end time minus arrival time or beginning time right next
waiting time so how much i mean how much time the process waits for getting the cpu so even the process is in ready state so there will be if if one process is going on execution by the cpu then the second process should wait until the the executing process completes its execution right so how much time the process waits for allocation of this cpu time waited by the process to get the cpu next response time say here response time means after starting that means after beginning of execution the getting the time taken to get the first response by the cpu that is called the response time after beginning of execution time to get first response is called response time so these are the different scheduling criteria scheduling criteria right cpu utilization throughput turnaround time waiting time and the response time so for every process we can calculate all these things so except the cpu utilization right so the cpu utilization means how long the cpu is busy throughput means the number of processor processes executed in given time period at a unit time turnaround time is time taken for execution that means uh, the difference for of Uh, completion time and arrival time and the waiting time waiting time means the time waited by the processor to get the cpu right so response time after beginning of execution time to get the first response by the cpu this is called the response time so all these are the different scheduling criteria so this will be taken care by the short term scheduler right so short term scheduler main task is so by using the scheduling algorithms process will be moved from ready to running state that means process will be allocated to the cpu or cpu is allocated to the process right hope you understood so in the next session we will start with scheduling algorithms so if you like my videos like my videos so share my videos with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you very much